They say that the most dangerous thing aboard a boat is a calendar. And on this passage, we got a small taste of just how true that can be. Hi, we're Laura and Stu. We moved on to our 36-foot sailboat Delfino last summer and headed up to the west coast of Scotland to explore the highlands and islands. We had such a great time, but we stayed there a bit too long. So at this point in our journey, we were short of time to head south before the autumn storm started rolling through. In fact, they'd already started arriving and in order to be back on the south coast of England for a booked haul out in Plymouth, we were going to have to make our three-day passage south during a two and a half day gap between two storms. We were going to have to push ourselves and Delfino right to the limit if we were going to make it in time. That was an evening and a half. All in all, could have been a better afternoon. So it's a big day today. We are preparing to leave Northern Ireland and sail down to Plymouth. I think we're going to leave at sort of nine, ten o'clock this evening. So we are spending the day getting everything ready, getting everything out that we're going to need, putting everything away that we're not going to need. We are expecting some relatively strong winds and some quite rolly seas. So we're having to do a lot of like stowing and like properly kind of making sure that everything's put away in the cupboards feeling a little bit nervous but yeah excited to see how this passage will go because the only other passage that we've done was the passage up here which was about a week after we moved on board and everything was still very chaotic and we were very stressed out so interested to see how different this will be once we've learned more about sailing but also a little bit nervous because now I've learned more about sailing and I know how much it's gonna suck so <laughs> fingers crossed it doesn't suck as much as we think it will. After our uh, stir and drive issues last time we're adamant to uh give access to the prop which is all under there so I could lift this up and get into it. We read up about the passage, checked the weather and planned our route. We were planning to sail 325 miles from Ardglas in Northern Ireland to Plymouth on the south coast of England. We were expecting that this would take about three days. We knew we'd be cutting it fine needing to leave into the tail end of one storm with another one arriving as we neared Plymouth but most crucially, we're expecting to have good wind for the almost 24-hour section across the Bristol Channel, where we'd be most exposed to the elements. So we decided to go for it and take the window, as it was probably going to be as good as we'd get at this time of year. We were almost ready to leave, but then things took a bit of a turn. Feeling bad. We are leaving for our Irish Sea Passage in 12 hours and I have got a migraine. So I'm already feeling a bit sick and um, we're just at the dock. So I think chances of seasickness on this passage are super high. Um, and generally feeling a bit guilty because she is having to do more of the preparation and probably more of the sailing than we would ideally like. <sighs> it's just frustrating. I get a lot of migraines, but this has been the first time that I've had one at a super, super awkward time for sailing. So I suppose I should be grateful that we've been on the boat almost three months now, and this is the first time that it's actually kind of interfered with our plans, but it still kind of sucks. While I waited for my migraine medication to kick in, Stu cracked on with working out how much fuel we had left. We were expecting to have really changeable conditions, with some strong wind, but also some long periods of motoring, and we wanted to make sure we'd have enough diesel to cover those. This should be a fairly straightforward job, except for the fact that nothing is straight on a boat, including all of our tanks. They are much wider at the top than the bottom, and the gauge reading just tells you how far down the level is, so Stu had to go through a bit of a procedure to work out if we'd have enough diesel for the trip. And once I was feeling well enough to peel myself off the sofa, we started turning it into our bed for the next three days. Setting up the sea berth. <coughs> so we're going to try on this side because this is the going to be the leeward side for the majority of this passage, if not all of this passage. Yeah. Um, so for people who don't know what that means, that means this was going to be the downwind side. So the side that is lower and therefore moves less, so it should be more comfortable. Yeah. But this is also the side that has got significantly more crap behind the sofa and is difficult to get into, which is why we're doing a bit of a test. The most comfortable place to sleep underway is right in the middle of the boat and as low down as possible. We normally sleep right at the front of the boat, so we needed to set up a temporary bed for when we're at sea. Our sofas are a much better place to sleep and have lee cloths which stop you falling out of bed when a wave comes. 
but we weren't sure if we'd be able to set this one up with the table in the way. While we could get the cloth up, we could feel the table through it, which would not have been ideal underway. Luckily, the table drops down, so we lowered it and moved our bedding over. Are you comfortable? Yeah. <sighs> because we knew this would be a rough passage, we wanted to have as much food ready to go as possible to minimise time in the galley underway. I tried to film all of it, but the camera battery died. So here is the first thing I made. Some mushroom, leek and cheese muffins to grab for lunch or snacks. I also prepped some trail mix and made some chickpea and halloumi curry. I probably actually won't make any of this again for future passages apart from the trail mix. The muffins were a bit stodgy and too dry for us. And while the curry was easy to reheat and could be eaten with a spoon, which are big pluses for eating on board, it was a bit rich for our sensitive sea stomachs. In future, I'll focus on less dry snacks. I was actually really craving some grapes on this passage and more plain dinners. Finally, it was time to put on our fowlies and head out to sea. We knew that the next four hours wouldn't be the most comfortable. We were heading into the residual swell from the first storm and the wind was also against us, which would make it feel even more rough. But because we knew another storm was on its way in a few days, we couldn't wait for better conditions and had to head out. I'm going to leave. Yeah. It's bedtime. I've just brushed my teeth to go to bed. What's going on? <laughs> it is more than we bargained for tonight. I think we've already been sick. So we're doing 5.7. I mean, the wind's quite nice at 18, but the sea state is, the sea state is, is hectic. Um, it's been like this for an hour and a half, and um, hopefully it will start to calm down soon. It, it is forecast to do so. I'm just hanging on for dear life. an evening and a half. Whew. Things have calmed down now, but last night was hectic. Just like confused steep seas, 20 knots gusting 25. We were like 60 degrees to the wind. Oh, glad that's over. Laura's getting up. Over. Laura was pretty seasick last night. Four or five bombs, something like that. I lost count on three. Yeah. Still managed to uh, do a watch though, didn't she? What a trooper. The wind dropped, so we went to roll in our Genoa and start the engine. So I don't think the universe wants us to get to Plymouth today or what in this passage so after making peace with vomiting my guts out all the way our head sail's not furling in <sighs> what's the story uh, so i was pulling on the furling line and the thing wasn't furling and i mean i guess this was probably something i should have checked i don't know i could show you if you don't understand the system I was pulling on the furling line sail's not furling i went forward to investigate and these two screws were just sat on the bulwark. Which I can't believe they were just sat there. Like, on the tow rail. I at least know. that's some at least that's some luck for us. So we're gonna try and re-screw them back in and see if that lets us furl it up. Yeah, if not we'll have to um take the sail down. Yeah. With more strong wind forecast and a problem with the sail, we started to wonder whether it was a good idea to carry on. So we managed to get those screws back into the uh, into the furler, and um, the Genoa furled just fine. Um, a little bit concerned, I guess, that those screws are what's stopping the sail from furling, but we'll think about that in a little bit. Uh, 
currently kind of weighing up weighing up our options. I mean, I think we're, we're both committed still to at least going as far as Milford Haven. We're sort of um, off the coast of Dublin, between Dublin and Hollyhead right now. And the options are either to continue to Milford Haven or, or try and risk it all the way around Land's End. It's quite um, strong downwind sailing, it's likely. I think it's forecast to be like 20 knots gusting up to 25 or 28. Uh, somebody described it to me as a sleigh ride, <laughs> which I think, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I think um, we'll get a few hours of sleigh ride even if we go to Milford Haven, so we're just going to go and see if we can handle it. Keep going until it doesn't make sense anymore. Also, uh, Laura has recovered. She's up here eating her uh, seasickness cures. Tortilla chips. The rest of our first full day at sea was mostly calm and uneventful, and we enjoyed it while it lasted. Just came up from my off watch. Pretty good, like two hours of sleep. It's currently quarter to seven. The sun's just setting. Um, it's been a pretty chilled out day, to be honest. A lot of motoring. It's all starting to build. Wind's supposed to build overnight. Um, reaching a peak tomorrow morning of sort of 20, gusting 25 maybe. Uh, a little bit more, 27, gusting 27. Luckily, the peak of that will be in the morning, and our decision point for Milford Haven is sort of after it builds, so... Tonight's just a question of... Yeah. Keep on trucking. Um, probably when Laura gets up in two hours' time, we'll put the next reef in. We'll put a reef in, maybe two, just to be safe. It looks pretty good. Looks like um, we're gonna go for it. Although the wind was slightly stronger than we'd have liked, we decided to press on. We knew Delfino could handle the conditions and it would be safe to carry on even if we would be slightly uncomfortable. Most importantly, the wind was blowing in the right direction for us from the north, which is rare in the autumn when storms typically blow in from the southwest. So we carried on. As the wind built, so did the waves. We'd now left the shelter of Ireland and were exposed to the waves rolling in from the Atlantic Ocean. While the waves were bigger than those we experienced on the first night, they were further apart and approaching us from behind, so we surfed down them rather than smashing into them. While life on board wasn't particularly easy, it was certainly more comfortable than the first six hours of the passage. Second morning, and we've officially entered the sleigh ride portion of the passage. Fairly strong winds on a broad reach with pretty big waves. Just making some breakfast. Are we halfway? Um, I think we're over halfway. Ooh. What did we say? Three days. Yeah, it was like 2.8 or something, or something. Yeah, and we've done, yeah, we've nearly done one and a half. So we must be over halfway. Yeah. I think we're certainly over halfway in terms of the sun, if that makes sense. Oh, well, I hope so. I think the last 12 hours is just going to be pretty chilled. 
I don't know, I hope the first six hours of suck are the most suck I'll have. Pretty sure they will be. The wind's not going to get stronger than it is. So, unless the sea state gets really horrible, you know, we just have to get through this section. Yeah. Hi. Laura's resting. Yeah, Stu's being a hero. He's being the right amount of hero at the moment and letting me rest a bit more than him, but don't be too much for a hero, please, mate. I won't. Yeah. I'll need to sleep later. Yeah. I'm quite seasick this medication dump, so I'm pretty drowsy. Yeah. So we've made it into the Bristol Channel. It's pretty rock and rolly, but sun's out, which is nice. And we're actually a bit ahead of schedule. We've been doing pretty much six knots all the way and our average speed for the whole passage has been 5.1 knots. We thought it needed to be 4.6 to make it around Land's End by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. But actually we're going to make it to Land's End potentially before midnight tonight. So we've been making really good time. Oh, waves. <laughs> Both getting to the point of the passage where we're just a bit bored listen to all our audiobooks, listen to all our podcasts. So, yeah, looking forward to getting there. Land ho! You haven't even seen it yet. Oh, that's like that's definitely land. Yeah, and I think there might be a boat as well. <sighs> Welcome to the graveyard of empty snack packets. <laughs> We're about to eat an actual meal. Yeah, we are about to eat an actual meal. We are 28 miles from Land's End. I think I'm getting another migraine, so this has been a great passage for me. And I think there's a boat in front of us. All in all, could have been a better afternoon. Juice is making us heat reheating some curry. Um, the sea state's still pretty big, but it is improving. And the wind is also dropping off a bit as well, which is good because it was quite strong early in this afternoon. We were seeing gusts up to like 26 knots, whereas when I was seeing gusts up to like 20 knots, so that's definitely an improvement. And yeah, should be it should be going around Land's End in about five hours. Yeah, five hours. Yeah which by that point it will be dark so we won't be able to see. We probably decided that we're going to go to Falmouth instead of Plymouth today. Um, so there's remnants of a hurricane coming through tomorrow evening so don't particularly want to push it all the way onto Plymouth if we don't have to and plus if I'm feeling like total crap for the rest of the passage it means that Stu's only got a single hand boat for another like 12 hours. Just because you've been seasick all the way doesn't mean I single handed it. I slept mm -hmm. a lot whilst you were on watches. Yeah. But I would like to watch the rugby tomorrow in, in Falmouth. Okay. I would like to watch the rugby tomorrow in bed. Yeah, that too. Yeah. In Falmouth. Yeah. After almost 24 hours of sleigh ride, the wind calmed 
the waves slowly calmed and we approached Land's End. crab pot on our way in. All seems to be fine though. Good morning. We are 12 nautical miles from a marina in Falmouth that we're going to head to for the next couple of days. Wait for another weather window to head along to Plymouth. And yeah, both very relieved to nearly be there. I mean, we're, we're going very slowly, so it's still going to be another like two hours before we're actually even in Plymouth Harbour. Yeah, and I know I should feel super relieved for being here, but I'm mostly just beating myself up. So we were hoping that this passage would feel a lot easier than the one up because we just moved on board on the way up. And we were hoping that with three months of experience of the boat, this would seem easier than that one. And while the watches have been easier, the conditions were a lot more difficult. So yeah, I'm just, this morning while I'm super tired and haven't really slept very much for a couple of days, I'm just feeling a bit like didn't achieve the thing that I wanted to and questioning whether passages are for me and therefore whether this lifestyle is for me. So it's all, all feeling a little bit heavy this morning, but I'm sure I'll feel happier to be in later on today. Part of the reason I felt so defeated was that this passage was not the most extreme that we were planning for the autumn. At the time, we still thought that we were going to cross the Bay of Biscay in late October and potentially cross the Atlantic in January 2024. So this passage was just going to be the start of increasingly more intense sailing. And if we couldn't handle this, we weren't going to be able to handle the rest of our plans. But being on the bow with the dolphins reminded me why I put up with the hard times for moments just like this. It felt like the dolphins were escorting us into port, giving us a helping hand for the last few miles. That's the thing about sailing, just when you want to pack it all in, there's a load of dolphins and it cheers you up a bit. Finally. Finally. It's oh. not even been like that long for the passage by many standards. Like we left at what, 11 p.m. on Wednesday and it is now 20 to 10 on Saturday. So we've been out for like almost two and a half days. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah, almost exactly two and a half days. But the conditions were rough. I mean, it was horrible. A, it was. Can I firstly just say I'm looking forward to that McDonald's. Oh so yeah, much. we're gonna smash McDonald's breakfast in a minute. Um, but the conditions were a big step up for us. A big progression. I mean, like maybe maybe we underestimated them a little bit on the first night. Yeah. I think they was they were bigger than expected, but we made it. We have, well, we haven't made it to Plymouth, but we have made it to Cornwall. We made it to Plymouth and Cornwall, or Plymouth and Devon. We've made it to the south coast of England. We made it round Land's End. We made it through we made the Western it Channel. Land's End. We made yeah. it round Land's End, and we made it past Lizzie Point. Yeah. Those were like the big, yeah, the big obstacles that we, we passed. And now we can just spend the next month right on this coast. Yeah. And my Google searches this morning are like Bay of Biscay waves, wintering in Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wintering we, in northern France. <laughs> should we just like make a life here? Like, yeah, I could do. That was quite nice. I think if we wait for the right window, we can manage Biscay. Yeah. I mean, the Bristol Channel was no joke. 
it was like gusting to 30 and it was 2.5 meter waves. And and quite it, short period, like seven second period. And every so often a couple of really big ones would roll through and the whole boat would sort of tip over. Yeah, um, yeah. But we managed it. Yeah, we did. So I think we'll just have to keep an eye on, on the weather for Biscay and see yeah. what happens. And we'll, we'll just let the weather dictate. Like, now that we've got back down to Plymouth, well, now that we've got back down to Cornwall slash Plymouth, this is sort of the end of our pre-planned Sound stuff. like an American. Oh, now that we're back in London, like... Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Well, now, but now, like, now that we've got back here, yeah. we haven't really got anything else planned after our boat work period. So we can let the weather dictate entirely what we do from here. Like, we haven't got anyone coming to meet us, really. Yeah. So, yeah, up to, up to you now, Mother Nature. Where are we going? Give us an opportunity to cross Biscay, please. That a nice, nice one. A nice one, yeah, yeah a nice one. I've had nothing but trying out. You did great overall, Laura, on that passing. Thank you. you did really well. Oh, but yeah, migraine the day before we left. A whole night of seasickness and then a migraine last night. Yeah. Well, but you <sighs> held watch in the Bristol Channel, no problem. Yeah, Bristol um, Channel was actually the period where I felt the least sick. Yeah. And I think overall, like, tactically, we made good choices. We put up reefs when we needed to. We didn't shy away from doing that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, until next time. We pulled into Falmouth after three nights at sea, relieved, exhausted, and not really comprehending what we'd achieved. After some food and a lot of sleep, we finally started to feel proud of ourselves. And it turns out we actually wouldn't have made it down to Plymouth in time if we hadn't taken this window. So although it was marginal, we're glad we took the opportunity when we could. And as for a weather window to cross Biscay, well, it's now April 2024 and we're still waiting, but at least we've had more than enough time to recover from our trip down the Irish Sea.